Okay, we're back at EMC World in Las Vegas, where we are on the ground zero of innovation, cloud meets big data, and I have a guest with me, Cheryl Chamberlain, who's a friend of mine and a colleague out in Silicon Valley. Cheryl, you're a technology alliance manager. I met you at VMware, and uh, we've had conversations. We've worked some uh, panels together. You brought me in for a panel for the ACG, and you just recently won an award. But uh, we know each other because we were networking in, in Palo Alto and Silicon Valley. So uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, John. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And it's also a pleasure to be on camera with you. We talk a lot face to face, but now we can remember this moment for forever. You know, you'll never forget your first time on camera, so, <laughs> you know, with John Furrier, so don't uh, remember. That's actually a bad joke, but that's okay. <laughs> um, we're, we're having some fun. Uh, we've had a lot of fun together. We're doing the ACG in Silicon Valley, do a lot of volunteer work, uh, building that community of business leaders in Silicon Valley, uh, and you've had a chance to work with a lot of folks out there. Pat Gelsinger earlier, or earlier yesterday, talked about Silicon Valley being the epicenter of innovation, and where IT um, innovation exists. Can you share with us, because you're exposed in the trenches, um, talking with alliances, and also just in the community. What is Silicon Valley like these days? <sighs> Silicon Valley is really the center and, and of everything that you see around innovation. But it's not just innovation that's there, it's the level of collaboration that happens. So people look for opportunities to innovate and they do it by building relationships, being part of something bigger than they are in their day job, and joining organizations like the Association for Corporate Growth Silicon Valley, getting involved in leadership organizations, being part of the university, Stanford, Santa Clara University, and they use those relationships to change what is possible, what is possible in your day job. Because really, if you think about it, what innovation is, it's about people thinking outside the box, what they're doing today, and looking into the future. So that's how I see Silicon Valley. You've had a, you've had a chance to work at uh, EMC and interface with VMware and dealing with all the roadmap and the product issues and all the executives. Talk about the magic around EMC and how they're really enabling in their partnerships. I mean, they're talking about going into new markets with Hadoop, very aggressive, bold move for EMC. And then they've done this before. Joe Tucci has done things like this, bought VMware. But VMware, the leader in virtualization, you, you worked with them. There's also VCE out there as well, which Frank Halk is now leading up. And so, these are joint ventures. These are, in some cases, VMware is actually owned by EMC. So, there's a lot of cross-pollination, there's a lot of interaction and a lot of integration. How does that all work? How does EMC get it right? Great question. You say EMC owns VMware, really they own their stock. You know, it's really managed as a separate organization, so EMC and VMware have a different board of directors. So really the relationship is a partnership, it's an alliance, which is important to them and it's important to EMC because it allows you to come together and think collaboratively about what you can do to get to the next level. Um, and that's similar to VCE, so really a joint venture. In that case, um, a joint venture of, of really multiple companies coming together. But I think the magic, again, it's about people under understanding what their roadmap looks like and how much better it can be if they build that roadmap together and look at the future and what's possible. And that's really where it is. Again, it comes back to what can people do to change technology, look at collaboratively what their portfolio looks like, and then look outside that portfolio in the long term to strategically change what we're doing around cloud. Talk about the innovations in the ecosystem in Silicon Valley. You work um, as a essentially volunteering position with the ACG, um, and uh, what does ACG stand for? Association for Corporate Growth. So ACG is really about M&A, people that are in the middle of mergers and acquisitions, investment bankers, attorneys, small corporations, medium and large, coming together in a networking environment to really associate what they want to do going forward. So for example, um, for me, I wanted to get on the, a board of directors. And through ACG, one of the attorneys that is there, one of the law firms, Shepard Mullen, invited me to go talk to one of their potential partners, customers, Sudisoft. So in having that conversation and those relationships and them seeing ACG, Shepard Mullen, and now Sudisoft, they can see the different skills that you bring to the table. So you can open up new doors and avenues for personal success, not only for yourself, but now Shepard Mullen and Sudisoft. 
it's exciting to live in Silicon Valley, and I'm you know I'm so lucky that I get to live in that sandbox in Palo Alto, and and get a front row seat and participate in in the building those sandcastles of innovation. And uh, Silicon Angle's been a fun project. We've got a lot of other things we're working on in our lab environment. You've been uh, observing it. So what do you think of the cube and what we're doing? I mean, this is I mean it's kind of amateurish. We got lights, but it's early. Mm. I mean, this is hot. I mean, just the idea that you can catch people that aren't expecting to have a conversation with you, record it, share it, get the viewers you know, c c um, coming together with you, and really taking what we're talking about, social media, to another level. But you're doing it independently. You're not representing an organization, a company, or yourself. What you're doing is you're gathering information that's very current, and you're delivering it to the community, the people at large, so that they can feel like they're part of what's happening. It's fantastic. I really yeah. love it. And that's, it's, it's, new. it's so new, it's exciting. Jeremy Burton certainly understands it, and the team at EMC, Pat Gelsinger, uh, totally get it. And, but a lot of people don't get it, and, and it's fun because the cube is not a profit really objective. We every dollar we get doing the cube, we put back right back in, because it's about real time knowledge sharing and sitting down with someone and having a deep conversation. And to go deep, like yesterday, Pat Gelsinger, the president of EMC, sat down with us for an hour, and we asked him some a lot of questions from social media to Hadoop and competition, new markets, how he's leading the organization. And it's just, it's so awesome. And, uh, you know, the internet, this is one of the powerful things of the internet. And it's a lot like social networking in the offline world, right? <laughs> so, so uh, which we've done together and yes. we've, we've hung out. Um, how do you look at the changing of social media with bridging into the traditional offline? Because ACG is a very successful organization that you're yes. involved in. and. How is that, how are those old worlds colliding where it was once Rolodex driven, you know, networking, now it's all online with Facebook and Twitter and. Great question. So again, ACG, in order for them to move forward and be successful and really reach a larger, larger broader audience, they need to bring social media into what they're doing. LinkedIn is one way to do it, but it's not big enough really to bring the, what we're doing now, recording interviews, um, ensuring that not only their customers, their audience, and their participants can, can network there, but they can remember those discussions going forward and through this sort of social media, which is the highest level, level of it, um, it can change it. What are some examples out there uh, that you can point to that are real innovative that you like, non-EMC related or VMware related that you can go out, it, it could be anything no, no outside tech that you're excited about? Yeah, you know, you're asking me about what, what am I passionate about? That's what I think of. Um, for me, passion is ensuring that everybody has the opportunity to rise beyond what they're doing today, to be connected to other people that are leaders and innovators. So creating a center of excellence for leadership and innovation so that as people look at themselves today, they can see where they can take their career, their background, and they do it through that open connection by connecting with other people and seeing what they've done. They can learn through their stories, their ideas. But for me, what I'm passionate about is connecting people, different audiences from different points of view and bringing them together and really creating what I call grassroots innovation, which is some, a program that I built in Santa Clara. Yeah, and you're, you know what's really also, you're involved in a lot of leadership opportunities there. And and the idea of collaboration is changing. We know we talked with uh, your our, our friend, Care, who's Anderson, who's at the Deloitte and Touche, uh, and she's pioneering this poll model, as they talk about at Deloitte and Touche, and uh, John Hagel, and who's the other guy, John Seeley Brown, are real thought leaders in that. But she's on the ground bringing this whole collaborative mindset to online. Yes. But it's not just networking and get involved and do a fan, Facebook fan page, it's real intimate and valuable collaboration. And, and that's just the beginning. I mean, this is so, it's so much fun. It's, it's the beginning and it's, she's very passionate about that. So what Kari sees is that what we're using today to connect it has limited, it's limited. So we can connect today, but what she wants to make sure is that going forward over time, those connections are broader and there's another element that will happen. So perhaps bringing in the opportunity for people to see what they can do with other organizations and continuing that discussion and the conversation for a longer period of time. I just wanted to step back again. You asked me about another innovation project that I'm working on, and I'm working now with UNICEF. I met the deputy director from UNICEF for Kosovo. He came to California and we talked about 
about what he's trying to do there. I don't know if you knew this, but in Kosovo, more than 50% of the population is under 25. And that's a result of the wars that are there. And when the population is so young, they also don't have an opportunity to be educated. So there's um, also other issues that are happening there where I believe it's 7% of the people that are born there, the children, don't ever get a birth certificate. So this is all, you know, because they don't have the infrastructure to support what they need. So what I s decided to do was work with UNICEF in Kosovo and bring them into EMC's innovation program. And we're going to put out a request to everyone at EMC to find a way to help Kosovo figure out what they can do to record more births. Because if you don't have a birth certificate, for certificate then you do not have an opportunity to be part of society. You can't get an education, you can't get health care. So just this idea of connecting UNICEF, Kosovo, the Deputy Director, EMC, and our Innovation Conference is another way to make sure that as people inside corporations, we can impact the world in an incredible way. That's fantastic corporate citizenship right there in action. Cheryl, you're amazing. Cheryl Chamberlain from EMC um, in Silicon Valley, great mindset. You know, that's, that's something we're going to see more of. I think, my, you know, my prediction is that we're going to come back with this connected social networking that's evolving. I think you're going to see a, a swing back to kind of these core values where, you know, when I first broke into the business, I worked for HP and had a chance to meet Bill uh, Hewlett and Dave Packard and, you know, and, and was immersed in the HP way. And the, the HP way was about corporate citizenship, it was about respect for individuals. And uh, I see that Silicon Valley mindset where, you know, there are guys who want to build companies again and, and actually have job creation, not about being cutting and being efficient. So, you know, I think this, this notion of corporate citizenship it, is back and I think you're a great example of that. Yes, absolutely. And every time I open that door for corporate citizenship, more people come through. So I really feel that people as they move forward in their careers are looking for a way to give back, but they can't always see how. So this is what I do as I open those doors and it really changes is going to change the world and the people in corporations. Okay, Cheryl Chamberlain, thanks for joining us uh, inside the cube. You've been a great support of us. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. And thanks for pleasure. sharing your story with us and knowledge. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. See you in, San in Silicon Valley. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.